Let's talk about a physical device called a router. To understand a router, you have to go back to basic networks of computers. Let's look at the most basic network that can be two computers connected together. Here we have two computers, personal computer one and personal computer two, and they're physically connected. Could be a wire, could be a wireless connection, but they're capable of connecting to each other and transferring data back and forth. So very rarely do you have a network this small with two computers. Now let's look what happens when you add just one more computer. So let's say you had three personal computers, personal computer one, PC two, and PC three, and you decided to connect them like this, a wire from one to two, wire from two to three, and a wire from three to one. This works relatively well. If personal computer wants to send something to both personal computer two and three, it has to do completely separate send operations. It's got to send data to here and then separately send data to here. Okay, fine. Not too complex. Let's add a little bit more complexity. Here we have four computers. Seems pretty basic. We can transfer information from one to two, two to one, two to four, and back and forth. You can see it right there. Here's the question. What if you want to send data from one to four? How do you do it? Do you have to send it to three along with special instructions that says, hey, this isn't for you. It's actually for computer four. Can you pass that along, please? How do you know computer four is there? That is connected on the other side. This computer could probably only see the connection to computer three and to computer two. Does it even know about the existence of computer four? All the stuff would have to be accounted for makes it a little bit more complex. So take this and magnify it times billions of computers in the internet. All of the various ways they're all connected. How do we manage this? You add in a separate component that is not a computer, but helps facilitate communication across this network, a router. Here's our diagram with the addition of a new component, the router in the middle. The router is connected to all four computers and they are no longer connected to each other. Now, if computer one wants to send something to computer two, it sends it to the router. The router contacts computer two, says, hey, you ready to receive some information? Say, sure, and it sends it on. And then once it's successfully there, router can tell uh, the computer one, hey, I sent your message to personal computer two, and so on. Now, this adds a lot of advantages. Any one of the computers here can, from the router, find out the names of all the other computers in the network and can therefore send them information without having to check with, send something to one here and then say, hey, this isn't for you. Can you send it on to another one that it wouldn't even know about? Now, routers add a lot more capability and there are people who specialize in networking and there's a whole lot of data in here about how you actually format all the data to go back and forth between the computers, how you actually establish a connection from the computer to the router and then from one router to another computer and how you confirm all the actual unique identities of all of these machines. It can be really complex. Some of you may very well actually end up working in this sector. This, however, is not computer programming. And for now in your education, it's enough to know that where you have networks of computers, a specialized electronic device called a router is incredibly valuable to manage the traffic between all of those computers. And by traffic, I mean the data transfer back and forth. Now, there are a couple other aspects of this to cover, just in terms of the basics you'll need in technology. And you'll learn a lot more of the advanced stuff as you become a computer programmer. One is this, the router is connected to all these computers in the network and needs a way to specify uniquely each one of the computers on the network. Now, the most common way that's done is through an address. Each computer will have a unique address. PC4 has an address, so does PC2, 1, 3. What is an address? It's a unique identifier for that exact machine. These addresses have to be formatted a certain way. The way they're formatted is based on, of all things, a protocol. Because remember, protocols are established agreements. The established agreement that relates to this, to giving an address for a computer connected through a network, 
is the Internet Protocol Agreement, IP, Internet Protocol. It's the basic protocol or set of agreements governing the fundamentals of how the Internet itself, this giant connected network of computers around the world, how do they handle data? How do they package it up and format it and then send it? How do they establish a connection between one or more computers so that they can even find out whether or not the computers are ready to receive data? All these things are covered by the Internet Protocol. So each computer in the world will have an IP address, an Internet Protocol address. No two computers will have the same address. And that way, even if you're dealing with a network that's billions of times more complex than this, you can actually have a computer in the United States get the Internet Protocol address for a computer in Russia and have communication occur between them. I'm going to cover a couple of very basic elements of the ways these computers are connected. There's a lot more to the technology here, but this will be enough to get you going for now. Types of connections between computers, because again, we're talking about a network which is connected computers. It may very well be that there's an intermediary, a router, and the computer connects to the router, which then connects to the other computer, but we're still talking about a network and they're connected in some way. How do we connect them? Well, the first one is there could be a wired connection. And you see a lot of this in offices where there's literal cables coming out of the back of one computer and heading off over to a router and every other computer in the office, their cables go into that router and they all connect. It would look like this, what we talked about before. Here's your router in the middle and every computer around it in the office has a cable that goes to it. A lot of the time it's blue, blue cable. It's called ethernet cable. Now what's ethernet? Ethernet is a protocol. All it is is a protocol. It's an established agreement about the actual physical connection between two computers. What's the actual, on the, on the actual computer, the box, if you will, there's going to be a little hole that you plug that cable into. What does it look like? Exactly how wide is it? How tall? How deep? The connector to it. Exactly how is it designed? The wires inside that cable. Exactly how many of them are there? How big are they? That wire. The outer coating of it. What's it made of? And to what degree does it protect against something over here that's like a radio signal affecting the signal inside that wire? All of these things need to be accounted for. And they're accounted for and designed and agreed upon. And when they're agreed upon, they become a protocol. Ethernet is a protocol. Now, a lot of the time, what people talk about with Ethernet is just that physical wire. Hand me an Ethernet cable. That'd be the cable that goes into the back of your computer and connects over to the router. But it's important to know that what you're actually talking about is a whole protocol. A set of agreements about the design and operation of these wired connectors between computers in a network. Ethernet. Now, let's talk about what happens when you go wireless. Now, this is going to be really simplified, but let's look at what wireless is. Wireless is a connection where there's no wires connecting the computers involved, whether that connection happens to be to the router or directly to another computer. The connection itself is actually made through the air. How? Think of it this way. Inside each computer is a special component called a wireless transmitter. You can almost think of it as a tiny little radio station. Just for that computer. And it can receive data and it can send data. How? As electronic waves traveling through the air. Radio signals, if you will. Now the cool thing is, this wireless transmitter, if it has the correct information, can know about the exact physical component in another computer. The other wireless transmitter. And it can send a signal through the air to that transmitter. Data just got transmitted without wires. And that actually is what happens in computers. There's a thing called a wireless adapter. Adapter is just a specialized electronic component that you can hook into a computer somewhere. Typically, they're on the inside of the computer. If you took the case off and knew what to look for, you could see a wireless adapter or a wireless transmitter. Same thing. That piece of equipment, again, takes data from the computer, turns it into a radio signal, it sends, over, it sends that data over to another wireless transmitter, which receives it, and then converts it to the data that that computer can use. Now, one 
very important thing. Often, people who don't know technology really well hear the word wireless and assume that wireless equipment will have no wires connected to it at all. Here's the thing. This computer certainly needs electricity because this wireless transmitter needs electricity to create the radio signal that's going to go through the air. In much the same way, if you buy a piece of equipment that is wireless, it still needs electricity to go into the piece of equipment, which can then generate the radio signal. Hopefully that'll help you explain to any relatives you have who are confused about wireless equipment, why it actually has a wire, the power cord.